Hello and welcome to Austria Vienna. My name is Radzi and as a lifelong athletics fan, it simply does not get much better than this because we are hours away from finding out if Eliud Kipchoge, the greatest distance runner of all time, will be the first man to ever run a sub two hour marathon, one of the greatest sporting spectacles in history. But first, let's turn the clock back to May 2017. He attempted it then and came up 26 seconds short. But since then, we've redoubled our efforts. There's been more training, there's been more focus, there's been more science, more technology. We've even amassed some of the best distance runners from around the world to pace make the legend himself. But 26.2 miles, 42.2 kilometers, is it even possible? Let's find out. Nobody has done that before. He is going to attempt to run under two hours for the marathon. It is very hard for people to understand how difficult it is. You train many, many months to the marathon and you get one chance and there's so many elements involved. People said it would never happen. Nobody has even come close to it. The mindset is critical to handle the pain. This is a, a brutal challenge. There's lactic acid in your muscles, and then so that, that last part is the struggle. It's very hard to maintain a consistent high level pace. It's a fight, but that's something, that whole combination from Elliot that, that he has physically, psychologically. He got that responsibility because people believe in him. He's one of the, well, the only athlete in the world capable of doing this. He actually believed 100% that he was going to do it. In 2017 in Monza, Elliot attempted to break the two hour barrier. He almost did it and he ended up with two hours and 25 seconds. Something that the world has said hasn't been possible. I certainly think it's why Ineos is involved in it, is how do you inspire people to think, you know what, I'm not limited by what the world tells me I can do. This isn't about what isn't possible, it's about what is possible. There's one man trying to do something in history, a moment in history. If he succeeds, this should be one of the sporting moments of the 21st century. A human being can break what other people think is impossible. An athlete, what an inspiration, what an unforgettable moment it will be if the great Kenyan can make history on this very road. He means what he says and he says what he means, especially when he talks about no humans having a limit. And already I'm meeting people that have travelled from far and wide just to be here, just to meet the man himself, to see the man potentially make sports history. But as for us right here and right now, we're going to provide you with insight. Insight, first of all, into how you broadcast a monumental event like this. In insight into the special role that the pacemakers play, but also insight into the man that Elliot considers to be a father figure. He is his coach. I'm, of course, talking about Patrick Sang. I'm genuinely delighted to be joined by Patrick Sang. Patrick, first of all, can I say thank you? Yeah. Because you're part of the reason why I love athletics. The image of you and Moses Kiptanui in 1993, the World Championships, is in my mind forever. But with that in mind, you're not just Elliot Kipchoge's coach. You are a three-time Olympic and world silver medalist. Why are Kenya so good at running? You represented Kenya. They dominate the world. Wow, that's a tough question. But uh, <clears throat> uh, there was already in the transition zone a rich history where um, Kenyans had participated uh, under the M uh, Empire Games, um, you know, and they set up a good tradition through the people like Kip Kano. Um, uh, uh, there are so many others, uh, Nyandika Mayoro. Uh, so we had already started a tradition and every new athlete coming in would always like to, to emulate whatever had been set by the, the predecessors. Now we, we're handing over to people like Elliot and you, you know the, 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 the relay uh, form, formation is continuing. That relay batting carried on. Yeah. You met Elliot as a teenager. Yeah, yeah, I met, uh, I mean, interestingly, I didn't know it was Elliot. Uh, there was this kid who used to come and say, ah, you know, can you write for me a program? And I'll just, you know, make notes for him, say, uh, for two weeks, you know, go and follow this. And he would come back after two weeks to say, ah, now I finished, what can I do from here? And kept the, the, the rhythm going. After, I think, close to two months, I was asking him, who are you? And he says, I'm Elliot Kipchoge, uh, we come from the same area. And that is uh, about 18, 19 years ago. So we started a journey, and here we are, we're still on the journey. 
it's been an unbelievable journey. Started on the track, ended on the road. Mm. <clears throat> I would say he was fantastic on the track, but on the road, he's a great. What's made him so good on the road and specifically the marathon? One thing is that uh, I think he, he took up running uh, from the time he started knowing exactly what he wanted to do. And of course, you know, when you perform in the track and field and you, you reach the top, you come to the road, you reach the top, you know, there's always something that within you makes you push a little bit harder to, to a higher goal. And I guess that's what uh, makes him a bit different from others, <laughs> like, like us. <laughs> to totally, mere mortals. Yeah. And hopefully that's why he will do the sub two hours. He tried it in 2017. He wasn't successful by just 26 seconds. How did that affect him afterwards? To me, I think he came out of the monster experience, uh, a better person, a stronger uh. person, because um, going to Monza, everybody was saying it's impossible. You know, um, so, and he believed that it was possible. So, of course, the, the humid conditions got worse towards the end of the race and uh, made him not to get the, the, the packet. But running two hours, what people, even the, the well-informed in physiology and things to do with the human performance, were believing that this was not possible and it came to being possible, I think uh, left him coming out of that battle zone, <laughs> yes. if I may call in quotes, uh, a better prepared person, a better strong, I mean, a, a more stronger person. Patrick, thank you so much for your time. And for me, as a lifelong athletics fan, this is as big as it gets. But the question that really only Patrick knows the answer to is how is he going to do it? There's absolutely nobody else that has a chance of breaking two hours in the marathon than Iliad. Iliad is the best prepared marathon runner ever. Well, we did a pretty comprehensive search and we had some criteria that was set by the performance team and by Elliot himself in terms of what he was looking for. And they ranged from sort of climactic conditions and environmental conditions, so things like heat, temperature, precipitation, wind. Not only is it stable weather conditions, but we have a course that only has an incline of 2.4 metres. It is probably the straightest piece of road I have ever seen. The quality of the air in the Prater area of Vienna is stunning. I think having a crowd is absolutely crucial. Having people behind him, giving him that encouragement, bringing that energy, is going to be a huge, huge boost for Elliot and for all the paces as well. We've worked intensively over the last six, seven months to ensure that we have every element covered. We have the pace car, which sets the pace for them. We have lasers beamed onto the surface of the road, so it allows them to maintain their stable position. Well, the challenge is that ultimately we're, we're trying to control uh, very heavy cars to deliver an incredibly precise pacing profile. The athletes behind it perceive that it's a natural acceleration pattern. The pacemakers are critical for Elliot to run as fast as he needs to. They maintain the pace for Elliot all the way from the start until the finish. Every lap he's also going to rotate the pacers twice. The pacing for the marathon, we are looking at one constant pace all the way through, from start to, to finish. That will be a 250 pace per kilometer, so 21 kilometers per hour. He will start in that kind of pace and try <laughs> to, to hold on till the finish line. And if all goes well, maybe increase a little bit the last uh, kilometers. How much he consumes is actually closely monitored by his nutritionist who will actually be here and will be measuring every time that he takes something from his water bottle and tosses it. They will actually pick it up so that he can weigh it and know how much that he consumed and then manage his intake. He'll receive his drinks from a bike rather than taking them from a table as he would normally do. Team is so important in this. He surrounds himself with the best athletes, the best nutritionists, the best psychologists, the best training partners. To be honest, he's probably the most mentally strong endurance athlete that I've 
I've ever seen. He really believes that he can do anything. Science is wonderful, but is supporting the desire and the heart. Without desire and heart, you don't go anywhere. So that is how you attempt to run a sub two hour marathon. But how do you attempt to broadcast this monumental event? Well, to answer that and much more besides, I'm delighted to be joined by the executive producer of this very event, Nick Moody. Nick, first of all, welcome. Thank you, Raji. So you are an executive producer. To yep. the layman, what exactly does that mean? Well, the, the executive producer puts everything together. So we started this project probably about three or four months ago when we were fortunate enough to uh, win the contract to, to broadcast. Um, and it's not just the world feed that we're making. There's these digital programs. Um, we're doing a second screen, which um, we'll come on to in a little bit more detail. We're also creating news programs. We're distributing it. Um, and we're actually making the program as well. Um, and a numerous amounts of, of feeds that are going to be coming out from today. And this is a a really special event and it takes a lot of planning so there are a lot of people behind the scenes that right are, now that are, yeah. yeah right now you pulled me out of the rehearsal <laughs> Sorry. to come out here um so yeah look it's it, it's a lot of fun but the executive producer kind of oversees everything has a vision about what the program should consist of puts together the talent so it's my fault that radzi's here um <laughs> puts together the commentators uh, and really has the vision about how the program should should come together. Works with the race organisers, and um, you know there are quite a few challenges along the way um, because for this event, performance is key. Performance comes first. Yes, and that's that's very very important. But you say the word challenge. What type of challenges do you have to face? Well, we, we came out for a, for a test event um, at the end of August um, and we have to be very considerate of what Elliot wants to do, what the pacemakers are doing. Um, so we can't get in their way. We have to make sure that they've got enough space to be able to do everything they need to do. We've got to make sure that the cars that we, that we want to use or the cameras and the motorbikes aren't um, causing any um, issues from their, for their running. Um, so everything has to be just right. And therefore, that, that's challenges because we do like to put cameras in certain places and potentially we can't necessarily do that. But we've worked around all those challenges. We've got some really good ideas. We've got a great camera now that's going to be actually on the pace car looking back at the runners, nice. which is going to look really good. Um, we've got a helicopter, a wire cam. Um, uh, so, yeah, lots of really nice cameras that hopefully will bring everything to life. And then I think one of the other things that I thought was really important was having a lot of um, graphical information for all the splits. Totally. So that um, every viewer at home, you know, you wants to know, I, and that's what I try and do is think, what would I want to be watching? What do we need to get across? So every time there's a split, we'll have that information, um, the time elapsed, the time to go, all those type of things that you're thinking, oh, what's, it's going to be there. You'll have it. So I'm hoping that the viewer at home isn't left um, wondering anything. We've kind of thought of it for them already. It's hopefully. got a real Formula One vibe to it with the splits. 42.2 kilometres. It's a lot of data, but it's so important because this is history. But with that in mind, euphoria. Eli Kipchoge, if he crosses the finish line, will have his euphoria moment then. Do you have one being in the production? Yeah, absolutely. Look, we're sports fans, so um, we get um, spoiled and we're very lucky to be able to go sometimes around the world to lots of different places for big sporting events. Um, and I think it's really special to be, this is unique. We're, we're, we're here, hopefully, to see history being made. And that is not only fun. I mean, this is work, you know, and... Uh, but it's a work, privilege. It's, it's a privilege, but it's a pleasure as well. So, yes, if, if and when he does it, and actually there's not an if, he will do it. Absolutely I'm, right. Uh, I'm sorry, that's ruined your last question. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it's, an, it's, a, it's a great honour and a privilege to be here, and especially when you have these wonderful sporting occasions. How will you celebrate if he does it? Um, I, I will celebrate once we go off air. Okay, of course, because you're a professional. Because <laughs> we will have to think about the interviews that we need to do post-match, post post-event, post <laughs> um, 
and about the, um, the, the I think there's going to be a presentation. So we want to get all that right. So um, we'll celebrate probably once we're off air and maybe uh, everybody will go out for brunch somewhere lovely here in Vienna. Well, Nick, thank you for your time. All the very best of luck for tomorrow because it is a massive scale production that you will see. There's stuff going on. There are buggies going past. There's an awful lot of noise, an awful lot of construction, which doesn't apply to a more personal production. I'm, of course, talking about a YouTuber, a challenge YouTuber, Mike Boyd. Now, Mike loves nothing more than a good old challenge. Challenge. So very recently, he took a treadmill, put it inside his studio, cranked the speed up to the Elliot Kipchoge pace and saw how long he could last. And by the way, it wasn't very long. So right now I'm running at my comfortable pace. That's about 6.2 miles per hour. And I can run for 10,000 meters like this. That's about six miles. However, if I bump the treadmill up to about nine miles an hour, at that speed, I can no longer breathe or speak comfortably. My lungs and my heart are going too fast and I can no longer have a conversation. However, this speed is absolutely nothing compared to the devastating speed that Kipchoge will need to run. That's 13.1 miles an hour. Let's see what that looks like. This is crazy! Oh, dearie me! The man. Well, Mike's here now. He's caught his breath. How was it? It's hard. It's really hard. I mean, that, that treadmill was cranked all the way up. So that's 30 miles an hour, about 21 kilometers an hour. And it's just off a full on sprint for me. Um, so it means I can achieve the speed, but only for 10, 15 seconds. And then I slowly start to travel back on the treadmill um, to think that someone can do that or is going to attempt to do that for 120 minutes. Is, is just beyond belief. It is insane. Yep. How long did you actually last? I think that the best time, we tried it three times, I think I got 35 seconds at my best time, once I was warmed up. Did anyone else give it a go? So we had a couple of other people in, um, they, had a, they had a go, some of them were very fit. Uh, the, the best time anyone got was about one minute 10. So just another 119 minutes to go for them. <laughs> yep, yep. That's why Elliot is the greatest distance runner of all time. But Mike, Elliot loves a challenge, you love a challenge. I do. What I sort do. of stuff do you do? So I run a YouTube channel um, and I like to challenge myself in the YouTube channel. So um, last year I learned how to solve a Rubik's Cube without using my eyes, blindfolded. Um, I did a little bit of open water swimmer, swimming and uh, I've learned to break a wine glass with my voice, stuff like that. So I like to, I like to push myself and see how far I can go. I'm gonna to have to check this out, where can we see it? You can just type my name, which is Mike Boyd, into YouTube and I, I should pop up, that's the idea. I've gotta ask about the Rubik's Cube, how long did that take? Because I can't solve one with my eyes open. Well, first I had to learn how to solve it with my eyes open. Yep. And then I think it took, it's like 16 hours, something like that, something in that range. And with, with that in mind, Elliot, he is a real inspiration. Are you now thinking you fancy another challenge yourself? Yeah, we have nothing in the books at the moment, so I, I haven't got something that I wanted to do, but after seeing this this track and, and just feeling the vibe from around here, I think I'd like to give a running challenge a go, maybe a 5K or a 10K. I've got to give a little shout out to Mike's better half, Kim, who's behind the camera. <laughs> Kim and yourself, where are you from? We're from Dundee in Scotland. God's land, my mum's <laughs> land. Mum, Barbara, if you're watching, hello, I shouted out Dundee. Once again, give us a fun fact about Dundee. What's the best thing about Dundee? My studio's there. Ah, oh, good, he's always working, he's always working. What are you up to this weekend? This weekend, I'm going to be standing right over there at the finish line, cheering Elliot on um, when he does a 159. And I've said it to everyone, I'm going to ask it to yourself, I think you kind of alluded to it, is he going to do it? I actually think he's going to run something like a 158. You going to win that? Okay, so yeah. I predicted 158, 27 seconds. Everyone else thinks I'm crazy, they think it's going to be a lot closer. Yeah. But what, what time will you go for? I'm, I'm going to go for 158 flat. You heard it yep. there first. Well, Elliot, the man we mentioned, so many people want to just get a word from him. Here's a cheeky little sneak peek behind the scenes look at his recent press conference.
you know in this world there is nothing go 100% even even the fastest car you cannot say it's 100% when it's on the road the tire might we might get a flat tire but uh, i can assure you that uh, i am calm and i i really looking forward for for, for saturday Eli Kipchoge, he's a man of few words, but each and every one of those words resonates right to the core. The one thing he's been talking about is the very important role that the pacemakers make. Now, earlier on today, I got to speak to Jakob Ingebrigtsen. and he's 19 years of age. He's a Norwegian middle slash long distance running prodigy. He's unbelievable double European gold medal in 2018. The world really is his oyster. But before we hear from him, let's find out the special role that all the pacemakers play because this is pacemaking with a big of a difference. Ali has got an amazing team around him, an array of world-class pacemakers that have practiced to help him on this journey of 42 kilometers. Pacers maintain the pace for Elliot, but all the way from the start and, and, and to the finish. They are so instrumental in supporting Elliot in every step of the way. The interesting thing is that none of these runners would be able to maintain that pace, so they have to rotate in and out in order to support him. That just shows how fast he actually has to run. Every lap he's going to uh, rotate the pacers twice. And so as he comes through the finish line area, he um, will have a new pacer group that rotates in and out, and so we have to do it quickly and efficiently. The pacemakers are of the world's best standard. We have a wide pool of around about 35 athletes. These are world champions, world record holders, Olympic medalists. Some of these pacemakers already train closely with, with Elliot and part of Elliot's team, so obviously it's about creating a team and people he's comfortable with. They have to be in tip-top shape, they have to have the right ability and also Elliot has to trust them. Bernard Legat is, is one of those athletes we've chosen as one of our team captains. Bernard's a world-class athlete uh, on, on the track and obviously now recently moved to, to run the marathon. He's an excellent communicator, very positive individual, very well respected uh, as an athlete and that's somebody that's important for us to be here but also be a strong captain. I think one of the most important things is to make sure that the pace is going the right way and make sure that the transition later on when other groups come in is going to be as smooth as possible. We want to make sure that when Elliot steps in that starting line, he will be confident because he looks in our eyes that my pacemakers are also confident and they are ready to help. Elliot has to believe he can run sub to us, and he does. And the pacemakers are there and they believe he can do it as well and they're there to help him to achieve that. That's what he will come here with in October, with that positive state of mind to run inside two hours. And we're joined by one of those pacemakers now, double European gold medalist Jakob Ingebrigtsen. How are you, sir? Doing good, how are you? I'm very, very well. You're just hours now away from pacemaking Elia Kipchoge. How do you feel about that? It's crazy to be a part of something uh, this big. It's, um, it's awesome to be here in Vienna, being a part of making history. And for yourself, you're just 19 years old. What made you think, I want to do this? I don't know, it's, uh, there's something about the, the marathon distance. Um, and with Elliot being so good and better than anyone has been before, it's, I think it's, it's fun for me as uh, an athlete to, to see how he works and how, how the marathon works. I think there's a lot of things that, things that I can learn going into the marathon, maybe in the future for myself. Uh, but also to, to be a part of um, seeing how fast a human can, can run in, in that uh, event. So we think about you, we think about the 1500 metres and the 5000 metres, not the marathon distance. So how far will you be running? Uh, I think I'm going to be one of those who's going to run the furthest. So I, ha I have two, um, like two, uh, I'm going to replace him uh, two times. Okay. Uh, two times um, about five kilometres. So it's... Uh, it's going to be tough even for me. Uh, it's uh, it's really fast, and it's um, I think it's going to be fun to see how fast he is actually running, and uh, for 42 kilometers, it's it's crazy. Do you think you'll be nervous beforehand? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because there it's it's so big. It's uh, I know that Elliot. It's this is is really important for him and for for a lot of people. So 
Uh, for us pacemakers, it's, it's important to not be um, be, be uh, stumbling around and uh, ruining anything. So, and at the same time, we have to make sure that he can run as fast as possible. From a technical standpoint, normally if you're racing, you run as fast or as hard as you want. If even if you're training, you're in charge of your own splits. But this time, you're running at exactly the pace that they want you to run at. How much of a challenge is that? It's really challenging, at least when you're outside. Um, for us in our training, we do a lot of training on treadmills. So we used to kind of put on the pace and then just keep on going. Um, but I think for many athletes, it's it's a struggle to know the exact pace because there's always ups and downs and bumps in the roads and everything here. There's really flat and uh, everything is perfect. So it's um, it's something to look at and uh, it's going to be exciting to to be part of that. Does everyone speak the same language? Is there one language you all speak? No, it's. Um, I think it's it's easy to communicate because when we are so many runners at this level, we know um, when we have to communicate, we know what we're doing wrong. So it's it's easy to communicate, it. and everyone knows everyone. It's it's a running environment, so it's easy to talk to people. It seems to me that in most sports, people act as individuals. Whereas in this, individuals are coming together. Do you feel like a team? Yes, sort of. Um, after all, it's an individual sport. Uh, but at the same time, we admire each other for, for putting in so much hard work because we know uh, exactly what it takes to, to become a good runner. Um, so it's a bit interesting hearing people's thoughts and uh, people's minds um, about the hard work and, uh, and also the um, um, competing at, at this level, which Elliot is going to do. Uh, so it's, it's more like we know each other, even though we haven't talked that much uh, beforehand. You know what it's like to have a, an expectation on your shoulders. In your case, it's Norway. In Elliot's case, it's the world. How do you think he will feel before he starts? I think he, he'll be really relaxed. Um, Elliot is a born leader, and it's, uh, he, he has 100% control of what he's doing. Um, I think he's secure in himself and if, if he's able to run fast, I think he will, he will be running fast. And when you say a born leader, can you feel that leadership even when you're actually running and nobody's speaking? Yeah, it's, it's strange. He's, um, he's a really strong guy. He's um, older than many of uh, us other athletes. He's been running for yeah before I was born, <laughs> uh, so it's it's natural to to look at it as a, as a, yeah a grown up in the the runners world. Do you think he'll do it? I think he will break the two uh, hour barrier. And if he does, how will you feel being a part of that? I feel um, really glad. It's uh, that's why we're here to um, to try to help him and make history. And if if it works, then it's awesome to be a part of. Jakob, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All the very best of luck. And actually, it's not just me that's wishing luck, it's a whole lot more. Elliot, I believe you've been doing a lot of work in training. I believe in you, like the way I've always believed in you. You're a hard worker. You're the guy that believes that no human is limited. And you're going to prove the world that you are the one that is going to make history. Elliot. You've been working for, uh, for years for this attempt. You have done all the hard work which is needed. We know that you are completely ready to make this event a success and I wish you all the best. It's good luck. Um, just give it everything that you've got and all of the preparation, everything has gone into it. But ultimately, when it comes down to it in the race, it all comes down to Elliot and how much he's got on the day and, and just judging his effort and his body and what it can give to perfection. Elliot, you're an amazing athlete. You don't believe in limits, so you don't have them. And it's amazing that children all over the world will be able to watch you doing this. And you break this to our barrier because of you and your belief, and also the team's belief in you. And I wish you all the very best, and I can't wait to watch you cross that line. Elliot, I just want to uh wish you all the best, send you all the positive energy from France, from Nice. Wishing you all the best and uh, strongly believe that, uh, that you can do it. There is no limit, 
and uh, nothing is impossible. All the best. Hi Elliot, it's Chris here. I just wanted to, to wish you all the very best for, for the big challenge ahead. I believe in you. Twende Rafriki, Sister Fania Izikito. Twende. Good luck Elliot. It's amazing what you've achieved so far in your career, but this is the biggest challenge and you have an amazing team behind you and the preparation that has gone into this. We all know that you can do it and now it's time to prove it to the rest of the world. So go for it. Elliot, good luck. The eyes of the world are watching you. We believe you can do it. Have the most amazing run of your life. I think it's safe to say that Eli Kipchoge has amassed the greatest possible pacemaking team you could ever imagine. Essentially, it's Avengers, but for pacemakers. Seeing them in full flight will truly be quite something. Now, a lot of you are asking the question. It was only officially decided a matter of moments ago, but the race will begin tomorrow at 8.15 a.m. Central European time. That's 8.15 a.m. Central European time. However, however, the action for us will kick off at about 7.45 on this very YouTube channel. So do not forget to subscribe to the INEOS YouTube channel. But if you fancy a more interactive, immersive experience, simply jump onto 159challenge.com where you can also do all of this. Elliot Kipchoge's challenge can be followed right around the world on television, YouTube and INEOS159challenge.com. Check your local channel details for TV or go to the INEOS 159 Challenge channel on YouTube. But there are also exclusive second screen opportunities available. So wherever you're watching, be sure to have INEOS159challenge.com running on a second device because there will be background content and behind-the-scenes clips during the challenge, all signposted from YouTube and some global TV programs. As well as social feeds, there is a platform of user-controlled on-screen options that puts you in control and lets you decide what information, maps, social feeds and data you want to see with the pictures as this dramatic challenge unfolds. So, wherever you're watching Elliot's history-making marathon attempt, TV, website or YouTube, you stay in control of the data and information you want at idios159challenge.com. No stone has been left unturned for this, I think it's safe to say. Just a reminder once again that you can watch the action live. It will begin officially. The race will start, the run will start at 8.15 a.m. Central European time. Do not miss it. We are talking about history. We are talking about a pioneer. We are talking not about medals or about winning or about being first, but we're talking about being the first. Eliud Kipchoge, the greatest distance runner of all time, is great. But can he become an icon? Make sure you watch it tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching. Good night, Vienna.